everyone welcome to jm chem now today's video is on basic introduction to organic chemistry part 6 video and here we will deal with nucleophiles now here we will get all the details what is nucleophile and how many types of nucleophile we do get and what are the factors which affect the nucleophilicity of a nucleophile as well as what is hard and soft nucleophile and the difference between a nucleophile and a base now let us start but before starting, if you have not watched the previous videos on basic introduction to organic chemistry, you can watch it. I will give the link in the description box as well as the i button present just above this video. That is, it is present here, somewhat here. So, let us start today's video. Now, nucleophile. From this word, we can understand there is some link up with the word nucleus right because nucleophile so it refers basically to nucleus loving species that is the species which loves to get attracted towards a positively charged species here it is new loving right now it basically implies nucleus loving now it is a electron rich species that donates electrons to form a new bond that is there is extra electrons which can be donated so that a new bond formation occurs between this species that is nucleophile and the electron deficient species which we will see in our next video that is electrophile okay now it attacks at that point of the molecule where the electron density is the lowest and it is of three types that is donation occurs mainly from three types of molecular orbitals non-bonding pi and sigma now we have seen in the molecular orbital video where we have dealt with the amos we have seen the energy levels right so, when the electrons are present in these molecular orbitals, they can be easily donated. And the arrangement was just like this, right? So, if a electron is present in non-bonding orbital, then it will be donated much easily as it is in higher energy than a electron present in sigma. So, the non-bonding electron pairs are better donated. So, the nucleophiles with non-bonding electrons are better donors rather than the nucleophiles with sigma electrons, sigma electron pairs. Now, we will see the examples of these three types of nucleophiles. Now, see nucleophiles with non-bonding electrons that is having lone pairs. First, we see water. We know that water has an oxygen in it. And this oxygen has lone pair. So, this lone pair is being donated to an electron deficient species. Similarly, for ammonia, there is one lone pair. So, this lone pair can be donated. NH2, NH2, this also has lone pair, right? Similarly, for NH2OH, then PHOH, OH has lone pair in the oxygen, RNH2, ROH, RSH. Now, sulfur also has lone pair in it. So, this lone pair is present in non-bonding orbital that is non-bonding molecular orbital and it can be easily donated and thus it acts as a nucleophile. PR3, R3N. Now, these species can be either neutral which we have seen here or anionic. OH minus, RO minus that is it is ether right ether alkoxy part only alkoxy part nh2 minus minus ch3 nh2 n minus h that is it's basically when one of the hydrogens from here is being removed the species comes to be as nh2 and when the bond breaks it leaves behind a negative charge so it is this species next comes our ph o minus then R2 N minus S H minus and this is all negative charges over sulfur because sulfur has lone pair and 
it gets bonded with the R. So when R leaves or H leaves, its negative charge comes on sulfur. Then R selenium minus chlorine minus that is chloride, bromide, iodide, fluoride and this is Cn minus that is cyanide. Now nucleophiles with pi electrons that is these pi electrons are also electron rich and these can also be donated like this. Okay. Now the last one is when sigma electrons are being donated. This is a harsh case because uh, we know that sigma is down most deep in the energy. So we will see what are the examples. Lithium reagents basically are Li, R2Cu Li. This is also known as Gilman reagent. We have already seen the Gilman reagent application while we were learning about the alkene. If you have not watched that video, I will give the link in the description box as well as the I button present above this video that is here in this portion. Okay, now let us see another example RMGX that is Grignard reagent. We have also dealt with Grignard reagent in one of the videos. NABH4 and LiAlH4 is also being dealt. So these also acts as nucleophiles with sigma electrons that is they donate sigma electrons. Now suppose if we consider for RLI, the MO diagram for RLI. Okay, now in that case lithium is here and the carbon is here and when they bond and form the molecular orbital it looks like somewhat this. This is the sigma star and this is the sigma. Sigma star and sigma of C Li bond and the two electrons are placed in this place. So this is the homo that is highest occupied molecular orbital which donates electron and acts as a nucleophile. Now we will see the factors affecting the nucleophilicity. Now electronegativity, size, charge and this is alpha effect. First we will deal with electronegativity. What do we mean by electronegativity? It is a tendency of an atom or group of atoms to attract the electrons present in it towards itself rather than donating to others. So what does it imply? It implies that the one species which is most electronegative will never donate its electron to the electron deficient species. So it will never be a good electrophile, right? So we can directly write it as electronegativity is inversely proportional to the nucleophilicity. This is okay. Now if we write few elements that is oxygen, sulfur, selenium, tellurium, polonium. We know what down the group electronegativity decreases, right? So this has the least electronegativity means what? It is most nucleophilic and it is least nucleophilic. Similarly, if we take for suppose fluoride, chloride, bromide, iodide, right? Again down the group what happens? Electronegativity decreases. So iodine is the most nucleophilic, right? So this is clear. Now we will see for the next factor which is size. Now in case of size, as size increases, donorability or the nucleophilicity which we say increases. So size is directly proportional to nucleophilicity. So this factor also justifies the trend which we have seen above. That is see, this is the most large in size. So it is most nucleophilic. Similarly, this one is most nucleophilic. Now we will see for the charge. Now for suppose if we consider for ROH and RO minus, we will observe the nucleophilicity of this is greater. Similarly, if we consider for this example, that is RSH and Rs minus, this will be more nucleophilic. Now, what is alpha effect? The last one, last factor, alpha effect is 
it states that if some heteroatom is present at alpha position that is next position adjacent position to the donor atom which will donate then the nucleophilicity increases just we will deal with few examples okay first suppose if we take this one that is nh2 oh now nucleophilic center is oxygen and there is a heteroatom present so its nucleophilicity will be enhanced now same thing if suppose we have a long chain oxygen and here ch2 ch2 and this goes on then this will be donated as it is terminal right and it has oxygen in its adjacent position that is alpha position so it will enhance the nucleophilicity now we will deal with hard and soft nucleophile basically hard nucleophiles are those with high electronegativity and small size and low electronegativity and large size is soft nucleophile always soft means it will be large in size so if we consider this trend f minus cl minus pr minus i minus then we know that this is least nucleophilic and this is most nucleophilic but what we think about hard and soft since this is large in size as well as low in electronegativity electronegativity decreases down the group so this is a soft nucleophile and f minus is the hardest nucleophile okay now we will see what is the basic difference between nucleophile and base first thing is both of them are electron rich okay and both of them have donor ability that is they donate electrons okay so what is the difference between these two so that they are named differently that is one is called nucleophile and another is called base so let's see this nucleophile attacks any other species except proton that is h plus whereas base attacks only protons this term must be clear now bases are of two kinds that is nucleophilic base that is one base which attacks proton as well as it acts as a nucleophile another is non nucleophilic that is it attacks only and only proton nothing else another criteria for being a nucleophile is that nucleophile is always steric sensitive now what do we mean by steric sensitive steric sensitive now this steric sensitive word refers that when bulkiness of the group attacking group that is a nucleophile increases then it prefers to act as a base rather than a nucleophile okay so nucleophile avoids being bulky so that there is reduction of steric hindrance so this is known as steric sensitivity and the examples of these kind of bases are for nucleophilic we will rather take examples like oh minus which can attack proton as well as any other species which requires electrons for it that is any electron deficient center and for non nucleophilic we will rather take lda now what is lda lda is lithium diisopropyl structures look like lithium plus n minus and there is two isopropyl groups like this okay there is also others that is dbn and 
L T M P. We can draw the structures, but at this level it is not required. Just know the names. So this was the total of the nucleophile, and hope it covered the topics, and it was helpful for you. So this much for today. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment.